Hello and welcome to another episode of Small Gold's Speculation Series. Today we're going to talk about Venezuela. Is the United States headed for war with Venezuela? While the eyes of the world are on North Korea and Rocket Man, the U.S. may be preparing for a war in its own backyard. The war of words between the U.S. and Venezuela have escalated beyond words as the U.S. has placed sanctions and a travel ban on Venezuela and also is considering an oil embargo on that country. Meanwhile, the Venezuelan president Maduro has called Trump Hitler and has told its people they should prepare to be ready for war. Let's take a look at what's going on on the timeline here. So we've seen scenes of economic chaos and a breakdown of law and order for many years now in Venezuela. We have seen reports of it and the official reaction to the situation by the United States government has long been muted and not really been a concern of the United States officially. However, over the past few months, the United States interest in its southern neighbor has intensified. So on August 25th, the U.S. imposed sanctions on Venezuela. This is from the statement, we will not stand by as Venezuela crumbles. The president's new action prevents dealing in new debt and equity issued by the government of Venezuela and its state oil company. It also prohibits dealings in certain existing bonds owned by the Venezuelan public sector, as well as dividend payments to the government of Venezuela. So that's basically financial sanction and doesn't have that many teeth because there is a exemption that you can get from the Treasury Department that includes 30-day wind-down period, uh, financing for most commercial trade, including the export and import of petroleum. So it doesn't sound like these sanctions prohibit the oil trade between the countries. Then on September 15th, Venezuela published oil prices in Chinese currency, according to Reuters, to shun U.S. dollar. And in their statement, Venezuela said they will implement new strategies to free the country from the tyranny of the dollar. And the Wall Street Journal reported oil traders who are exporting Venezuelan crude or importing oil products into the country have been can, begun converting their invoices to euros. So they are doing trade in accordance with how Venezuela says they want to do their trade, which again goes against what the United States wants under the petrodollar arrangements is that that oil get priced in and sold for dollars. Two days, three days later, or four days later, Trump addressed the United Nations. Now, everybody was interested to hear what he had to say about North Korea, but he also took some time to make some comments about Venezuela. And notice how he calls out socialism in his remarks he says we have also imposed tough calibrated sanctions on the socialist maduro regime in venezuela which has brought a once thriving nation to the brink of total collapse the socialist dictatorship of maduro has inflicted terrible pain and suffering on the good people of that country this corrupt regime destroyed a prosperous nation by imposing a failed ideology that has produced poverty and misery everywhere it has been tried so a condemnation, not just of Venezuela, Maduro, but socialism in general. Now remember, he's talking to the United Nations. Many of the members there are operating socialist countries. The Venezuelan people are starving and their country is collapsing. Their democratic institutions are being destroyed. The situation is completely unacceptable and we cannot stand by and watch. The goal is to help them regain their freedom, recover the country, and restore their democracy. Sounds like a prelude to war. The United States has taken important steps to hold the regime accountable. We are prepared to take further action if the government of Venezuela persists on its path to impose authoritarian rule on the Venezuelan people. Now, they don't say what those further actions are, but once you get past sanctions, there's not much else you can do other than enforce your will via law. Uh, via war, not law. I ask every country here represented to be prepared to do more to address this very real crisis. We call for the full restoration of democracy and political freedoms in Venezuela. Well, good luck getting that just by calling for it. 
Then he goes on to say, another shot at socialism. The problem in Venezuela is not that socialism has been poorly implemented, but that socialism has been faithfully implemented. From the Soviet Union to Cuba to Venezuela, wherever true socialism or communism is adopted, it has delivered anguish and devastation and failure. Those who preach the tenets of these discredited ideologies only contribute to the continued suffering of the people who live under these cruel systems. America stands with every person living under a brutal regime, and He's saying anyone who lives under socialism or communism, which would include China, our respect for sovereignty is a call for action. Well, the same day, President Maduro took no time in responding, and he called Trump Hitler, the new Hitler. A couple of days later, Nikki Haley had a press briefing, and she mentioned the possibility of an oil embargo on Venezuela. Now, it's not quite certain what she meant by an embargo, but here's her comments. She said she was at a dinner with her Latin American friends. I don't know if, what that means, who her friends are, whether they're Latin American or they're somehow in uh, diplomatic capacities. Who knows? But she says, I could tell you there was a lot of concern from all of them what's happening in Venezuela. They have all tried. We saw they tried to the OAS and Venezuela got out of that. We tried to do it through multiple avenues to get Maduro and to let him know what's not acceptable. The U.S. Move, U.S. has moved forward on sanctions, and they were not opposed to that. So she's saying that there's support in Venezuela, uh, in Latin America, for the sanctions against Venezuela. And then she says, "So yes, there were conversations of what they recommended going forward, but I don't think I should share that." Now, what might they have recommended? Did they recommend an invasion? Did they recommend further sanctions? Did they recommend? Who knows? But she says she doesn't think they should share that. I could tell you there's a lot of support in Latin America to see Venezuela to start to respect its people and go back to the democracy it's supposed to be. And I think every one of them was concerned about what's happening right now. Then she got a question. Can you share just your own thoughts about an oil embargo on Venezuela, though? Is that something that and Miss Haley says, well, you know, I mean, look, if things don't improve, all these options are always there. And that's what we're watching to see. First, it was sanctions. And now we'll look and see. It's not off the table. I can tell you that. Well, first of all, I want to know where the reporter got the concept to ask Haley about her thoughts on an oil embargo, because I think that's the first it was mentioned. And she happened to have an answer as if this has been discussed. And maybe it's just eluded me. I hadn't seen anything about discussing an oil embargo until I read about this in the White House uh, briefing transcript. But also, there was no discussion of the scope of what a Venezuelan oil embargo means. We saw above that it looks like the sanctions don't prohibit the oil trading with Venezuela. It looks like it's a financing issue with Venezuela. And I don't know how important that would be in harming Venezuela. Venezuela exports to many countries. The U.S. is not really reliant on Venezuelan oil. I think it's about fifth largest oil importer into the U.S., but it's about 10 times less than the first oil importer, which is Canada. So I'm not sure if that would be an effective embargo just to prevent oil coming into the U.S. Now, if they meant, or she meant, or she's considering a full-scale embargo, meaning Venezuela wants to sell its oil to, to whomever it wants, it wishes to, which would include other countries other than the United States. Well, an embargo would require, most likely, a military blockade. Now, that, in a sense, would be an act of war. Now, she didn't say we're considering a military blockade of Venezuela to stop them from exporting oil, but she talked generally about an oil embargo, and those specifics were discussed. So we'll see where that takes us. Then, a few days later, September 24th, White House adds Venezuela to travel ban list. Now remember, one of the criticisms against the travel ban has been that it was only Muslim nations, and now we have a predominantly non-Muslim nation on the list. And the rationale for including Venezuela wasn't that they were a terrorist state themselves, but that their government has not been cooperative in verifying whether its citizens pose national security risks. Now, Venezuela probably doesn't have the resources to do this. I mean, they, they're basically just trying to operate on whatever cash or boulevards or whatever they have left. So I doubt that uh, helping the United States screen 
its citizens for entry into the United States is at the top of their list. And therefore, the rationale is that the Venezuelan government cannot adequately help us and they're not appearing to be fully cooperative and therefore the travel ban applies to them and that ban is effective uh, on October 18th. Now, just out today, uh, Venice or late last night, there was a Newsweek story that says Venezuela prepares for war with the U.S. Rifles, missiles, and well-oiled tanks at the ready. And here's the quote from El Presidente. We have been shamelessly threatened by the most criminal empire that ever existed, meaning the United States, and we have the obligation to prepare ourselves to guarantee peace. We need to have rifles, missiles, and well-oiled tanks at the ready to defend every inch of the territory if needs be. So the question in the Small Gold Speculation series, are both countries just saber-rattling or threatening each other, or are they really prepared for war? Is this something Maduro probably needs war with the United States, although that might be his downfall. But then again, if there are further sanctions and embargoes, it's possible that Maduro regime may not be able to withstand it and the people may revolt. So, do you think it is likely that the U.S. will go to war with Venezuela? Do you think that instead the country will be destabilized and a new regime will come into place? Or do you think the situation will just continue as it is with Venezuela maintaining the status quo? Let me have your thoughts below.